Hey guys, this is Scott with uh, <clears throat> Mayhem RC, and gonna give you a little video today about just a few little upgrades we're gonna make to the SCX102. Um, fixing to pack these axles with some marine grease. Uh, if you guys like running your um, vehicles down in water, then you might need to seriously consider packing your uh, your bearings well not packing your bearings but you know greasing your bearings and packing your axles with some marine grease and the reason being is because water is a rear end or transmission's worst nightmare you get down in there um, just had a friend of mine um, he was in our crawler group on Facebook West Georgia crawlers <clears throat> um, rebuild some axles from a wraith um, for a guy who just bought one uh, come from up north somewhere oops sorry I hit my uh, <laughs> my tripod but yeah he um, he bought some uh, bought a wraith and they dug into the axles and I have never seen um, and they had neither uh, axle bearings as bad as those were um, honestly I don't know how they were still together they were so bad but it's important to keep the water out and marine grease is definitely a cheap way to do that so you can just <clears throat> continue forcing it down into the tubes with your finger and it'll keep right on going until you fill it up but this is definitely a great way to uh, seal these up and make sure that they stay well lubricated for a long time and keep the water off of them <clears throat> the water is, uh, you know, some guys, they love to run through the water, and, and that's cool. Uh, it, it's great that we can, that, you know, they're making these. When I was a kid, um, in order for me and my best friend that I did this with, in order for us to run these down in the uh, in the water, we had to waterproof the receiver waterproof the <clears throat> both servos because we couldn't afford uh, ESCs back then ESCs were um, the cheapest one was a hundred dollars a piece <clears throat> I'm sorry guys got a little cold today but um, yeah I mean it was definitely something that we couldn't afford being young and uh just had little meager jobs after we turned 16 and uh we couldn't afford to spend 100 100 bucks on the esc so we had to, we had to waterproof everything and <clears throat> they make these vehicles now where you can just you know go just go anywhere really and it's awesome but you got to take care of them because it's definitely, um, water will mess them up if you're not careful. And I haven't got that down just yet. Got it down a little too far. But yeah, water can definitely mess up a, um, axle on your bearings really, really bad. So this is one way <clears throat> that you can keep that from happening just pack that marine grease down inside there on both sides and it'll keep all that water from oozing in I'm also today gonna be um, installing some aluminum steering knuckles and as well as 
I'm going to install my new or mount should I say Pitbull Rock Beast really excited about these tires of done some research Proline has out a new tire called the Hyrax it's supposed to be a, a great tire um, and I was gonna get those just to try them out and see if they were um, as good as everybody were talking but um, they were at the end of March before I could get my hands on any and I've heard a lot of good things about these pit bull tires I've watched a lot of videos on Facebook I'm mean, not Facebook sorry on YouTube and I've seen them do some work and I think that they were definitely um, going to be some great tires to to put on. So I'm going to finish um, the other side of this. So I'm going to pause the video. And as soon as I get this flipped over, uh, the other tire off, I will uh, show you about taking that off on the other side. But And uh, we'll restart the video. So we'll be right back with you. All right, now that I got the, uh, the vehicle flipped over, I want to show you right quick. I also went to g -Made and I got some aluminum, um, I guess you'd call them hub covers. They look like um, center caps, you know, on, on a rig. So if you guys are interested in anything like that, here's your part number. They've got all different styles. Um, they come in black. They come in red. Uh, I believe I've even seen some blue ones. So if you like colors and you want to uh, put some colors in the caps in there, you can definitely do that. But they're show them to you right quick. They're pretty cool design. You uh, have this cap that you screw on with your fingers. And it's aluminum as well. And then your retainer nut for your wheel actually is now an allen screw so take it off and it comes with spacers and it comes with all those things to you know depends on how long your axles are how much your axle is sticking out on your wheel so everything fits properly but see it's just a little allen screw and see it's got that little um rubber grommet I can't even think of the name right now my mind just went blank I'm getting old uh, but that's what uh, keeps it tight on there and keeps it from coming off after you install it and as you can see I've got two spacers here so I can get those to fall off and just washers but my axles were long and the caps wouldn't fit so I just used some of the, the spacers with the kit and put those on so as you can see you saw in my first video how I painted these bead locks with some uh, anodized paint and they're holding up really well I've ran it a few times and scaled quite a few rocks and they're holding up really good so <clears throat> if you've never had one of these apart there's a set screw here to take off um, your hex nut so you just loosen that and well you gotta make sure you get it loose enough and it should sometimes they don't just pop right off but they should just pop right off there we go and be careful that you don't drop this pin on the floor because I promise you it will be very difficult to find and then one more um, hex nut screw and this plastic axle end or hub comes right off oh 
All right. Pull your axle out. Looks like it's pretty good. As you can see, there's no water damage. I have put mine in a creek a couple of times. So it was already doing its job. But with this marine grease, um, I do believe and know that it will do an even better job to keep the water out. So I know this process right here is pretty boring, so I'm not going to bore you to death with it. Oops, hit my tripod again. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm going to pause the camera, and I'm going to finish this up because you've already seen me finish up the other side, and then we will come back on camera to show you the front side and as well as the tires. Hold on a minute, guys. All right, guys, we're going to come back on the video for just one second and show you this thread lock. Anytime you're putting screws into aluminum you got to use thread lock and the reason that I know this is last week we went to the track for our short course trucks and we um, we were having a blast and the back of my slash fell apart and I was like, what the heck? So I went and got it off the track, and I thought I broke it. And what I had actually done is I had replaced a lot of uh, parts on my slash, my short course truck, with, sorry guys, I don't mean to keep bumping that, with aluminum. And I did not thread lock every screw. And every screw that I didn't thread lock fell out that day somewhere on that track. Thankfully, I found them all. And I went over to the pit area and I definitely put it back together with thread lock. So anytime you guys are putting <clears throat> aluminum parts on, um, you, you got to use thread lock. Uh, you, you can't use thread lock in plastic because in most plastics it will damage them and kind of eat it up. But if you want to thread lock your plastic, your screws in the plastic, the trick there is, is just take a tiny dab of super glue, put on the threads. Now you might think super glue, wait a minute, it's not ever going to come back out. Yes, it will. It'll come back out. It's not, uh, it's not that potent, but, um, it's definitely something you got to remember when you are using, uh, replacing, uh, aluminum parts in your car. All right, we're going to pause again. We're going to flip the vehicle around and we'll start on the front side. All right, guys. So this side, as you can see, is a little different. Got to take apart your steering components and things. Um, steering linkage will have to come off in order to replace these knuckles when I put on the um, when I installed the Proline shocks the original shocks for this uh, this truck were um, 95 millimeters the pro lines are 100 so I had to get my steering linkage I was having some binding issues so I had to get it to drop down a little more so the kit and even your RTR axial comes with these uh, rod ends that are curved it's for the linking the rear axle together well I was able to take those put one on each end of my steering linkage and it definitely allowed me to be able to drop that down the way that I needed to. So just a few more screws here and we will have this apart as well and be able to install these steering knuckles. Which I'm 
quite happy about. And no, if you're wondering, I'm not afraid of getting dirty. <laughs> I know I'm wearing the gloves, but if I'm going to be messing with marine grease, I don't really want that getting up under my fingernails. That stains your hands pretty bad, so that's what that's about. Normally, I don't always wear gloves when I'm renting on the vehicle, but... It definitely does help sometimes. So, see these barons? It's got a little dirt back in the back there. I'll blow these out. Um, well, no, I won't because I'm replacing them. Hmm. But if I wasn't replacing them and I was just packing these barons, I would definitely blow these out before I put them back on. But the barons look pretty good. Go ahead and pull out the axle and I'm just going to take off the knuckle end so I can pack some marine grease down in these bearings. So. Alright, not to put you guys through the turmoil of watching me have to do that I'm going to pause the camera and I'll uh, show you the re and I'll show you as I put the install the new knuckles all right real quick guys uh, I'm gonna show you now these where the plastic knuckles had the shouldered um, screw or bolt these come with a brass bushing which will last a good bit longer and not be so tough as that steel that hardened steel shoulder screw would be on the um, on the aluminum so just wanted to show you that little difference it would definitely make that last a good bit longer. Right. All right. Starting to look great. <clears throat> Hope I'm not boring you guys to death with all this uh, wrench turning, but definitely want you to see the finished product if you guys are interested <clears throat> so this goes of course in the center here and we're gonna get our bolt or sorry our screw doesn't take a lot of thread lock just a little down there on the end where it's going to go through. Actually, it might be a little easier just to put a little bit in the end of the threads. <clears throat> Probably help if I also had the right screw. So, so like this. It's 
always fun having a line up screw holes. And that is it, guys. And the vehicle looks a little cooler as well as is a little bit more sturdy. So <clears throat> it looks great. And <laughs> I'm going to get me some jack stands for this because uh, it's just like working on a real vehicle. But uh, I'm going to install the pin back in and uh, the hex cap. And then I'm going to flip over and do the other side. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So I'm going to pause the video and then we will get into the pit bulls. All right, guys. So now, <clears throat> I guess I should show you right quick. The finished product. All aluminum up the back. So excited to... Uh, going crawling Tuesday afternoon excited to see if um, the little weight might help a little but I'm really excited about these pitbull rock beast they say that they are the best so we're gonna find out and then when we do I will let you know for sure. Alright, so these are SSD uh, steel stamped wheels. Be real bead locks. So definitely have to do some wrenching to take these apart. And I'm only gonna do one of these guys so that I don't the video doesn't end up being so terribly wrong. I mean long. <laughs> it may be terribly wrong too. Um <clears throat> But I'm going to do one of these and show you how these wheels mount up. SSD makes a really good wheel. And um, I have had no issues with these wheels. They definitely are a lot um, heavier than the stock wheels. So they add more weight to the, the low end of your vehicle. The other thing, what I'm going to do next... Um, probably is what you might see in the next video is um, some metal or or steel or aluminum bumpers in the front and the rear and also um, I'm looking at some aluminum housings for the axles all aluminum and the reason for that is um, over the plastic axles that are on the vehicle as stock it will add um, 225 grams of weight on the very low side of your vehicle. So it'll make a pretty good difference. As you can see when you bead lock those, they tires are so soft they really get... <clears throat> so again, I just want to say that uh, these are the stock tires, the BF Goodrich. Um, all terrain they've they've been a decent tire uh, I've climbed some but as you can see the tread difference is and these really get filled up with mud like if you get anything wet um, they fill up with mud and they're just slick I'm hoping this won't be the case with the rock beast um, but it should work out pretty good and as you can see this the foam it comes with two stage foam really soft foam uh, up against the tread and a firmer foam that's going to be around the wheel and you just kind of want to make sure that your foam is straight and um, even as possible uh, mounting this foam is a little trickier than these tires it's going to be a little trickier than with the other tires because the foam is so thick I think it's one of the characteristics of the pit bull tires that is different than all the others. I've never seen foam quite this thick in um, in any tires, much less crawler tires. So, from what I understand, um, 
they can be quite difficult to get in. Now, the steel stamped wheels, they don't, just because the lug nut holes line up, don't mean that the spokes will. So, you kind of have to make sure you got them right before you go completely back together with them. which can be quite difficult to do sometimes to see that there we go looks like it's right and these are so thick that foam is really getting in the way that rim I have to try to They are difficult to mount, but it will be worth it. There we go. It's finally starting to go through. Ah, slip through the bead. Woo wee. <laughs> These are going to be difficult. Alright, let's lay that down. <clears throat> the BF Goodrich are difficult, but they're not this difficult. That extra foam really makes a difference in these tires. Gotta have patience, guys. You don't want to work on an RC if you don't have any patience. Because I promise you, it will test it. Because everything's so small. Starting to think maybe I should have bought these mounted. Alright guys, well, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to pause the camera and see if I can get this figured out and then I'll come back. Alright guys, I think I got it figured out. What I wasn't doing was pushing on the back side of the rim enough to get the foam packed on the other side of the inner liner. That's what I think the problem was. And then again, maybe not. These are definitely going to be quite the challenge. And I am not about 
to pull this foam out because this is why the pit bulls are supposed to be so great. Or well, one of the reasons. So I am just going to continue to work with it until we get it. Sorry for the silence, I'm just thinking. <laughs> definitely, definitely tough to mount these tires. But Alright. And here you have it guys. My SCX ten two with the Pitbull Rock Beasts upgraded <clears throat> aluminum axle ends or hub ends as well as the steering knuckles as well and <clears throat> I, since the last time you saw I put a roof rack on the body and I have a light bar LED light bar that will go all the way across the front of that it's on its way in the mail can't wait to get that in hook it up but all in all um, I really like this I think that it's gonna be awesome on Tuesday these tires are really soft they're really sticky and I think we're gonna be able to do some massive rock crawling hope you guys enjoyed the video um, sorry about the length but I appreciate you guys watching. If you like um, this series of the Axial SEX-10 2 upgrades, please like um, the video as well as uh, subscribe. I hope you guys are having a nice weekend. And again, this is Scott from Mayhem RC. My little sign in there. And I appreciate you guys watching.